Hola, ¿cómo están? ¿Bien? ¿Más o menos? ¿Mal? ¿Muy mal? ¿Muy bien? ¿Súper bien? ¿Súper mal? Yo muy bien. Y muy bien, porque hoy I'm going to teach you, today I'm going to teach you a lot, almost everything. And I say almost because sometimes I forget. Oh, I forgot to say this. Oh, I forgot. But I'm trying. I'll try not to. Okay, I have it all in my mind. I'm going to teach you all about the word se. Se. So small. Se. S-E. -E. Se. So small and yet so important. It's one of those things in Spanish that are so small and so important. It teaches, this is my philosophical me, it teaches about life because such a small thing can really, really explain to us a lot of bigger things. It's a small, comma, big thing. Now, you probably have seen this word a lot. You probably open a magazine. I have here my leftist magazine very well. Uh, and you can see it everywhere. Open whatever you may want to open. And you'll see say it's everywhere to be found. You won't lack this word. And a lot of you are like, what is say? How do we use it? How do you guys use it? It's so complicated. And I'm sure you have asked your native Spanish speakers friends. Say, hey, what is this say? It's like, oh yeah, it's, you know, when, when you talk about uh, like me baño, el se baña. It's like, yeah, but when you, oh yeah, yeah, that too. That, like most Spanish speakers won't be able to give you a complete explanation without leaving you more confused. I bet you, if you have done it, you end up like, I think I was clear before this person told me, because it's complicated. In fact, some linguists say that there are conference about this word. So linguists get together to categorize this word. And so they call it a pronoun. They call it a particle. It's a particle. So it's like a particle in the universe of Spanish, okay? So let's talk about this particle. Se. Muy bien. The way I did it, so in order for you to understand better, is I kind of summarized the way we use it, and then I gave you some examples. But of course, I'm going to deep, uh, dig deeper, deep digger, I was gonna say. Deep, dig deeper into each one, okay? So let's forget about my magazine. You see here, let me just find one quickly. Yeah, there are so many. I, I, won't, I wanna go this through this first, and then maybe I open my magazine. Ladies love their magazines. Um, and I'm going to teach you this one. Anyway, okay, let's start. I'm a, I'm a bit distracted today, so I'm gonna focus. Enfócate, Ana. Okay, muy bien. Muy bien, se. We use it as a reflexive, reflexive pronoun. Now, what on cloud nine is reflexive pronoun? Well, you probably have seen it. It's when you say, uh, yo me baño, tú te bañas, Él se baña, usted se baña, ellos se bañan, ellas se bañan, ustedes se bañan, nosotros nos bañamos, vosotros os bañáis, if you lived in Spain. So, here, you have se here. You're going to use this se as a reflex, with reflexive verbs, with reflexive sentences, which means, the subject and the object are the same, which means you are the, uh, the patient, you are uh, the receiver of that action, okay? For example, uh, usted se lava las manos. Yeah, like it's your hands. Maybe it's not like se lava el cuerpo, it's part of you. It's kind of the action returns to you, reflects on you. Ella se lava los dientes, right? So we're not talking about two people. Uh, there are verbs and the reflexive pronouns where the action is reflected. And you're going to use this ser with tú, no, perdón, perdón, no tú. With él, ella, usted, ellos y ellas, ustedes. Uh, muy bien. And then you're going to use se. How do you recognize those reflexive verbs? Well, as I said, are th those are verbs who uh, that can reflect the action onto you. So, subject and patient. 
no? Like the doctor and the patient. It's kind of like the doctor is giving medicine to himself. Like you're the subject and then you're the object. So if you have, for example, lavarse, peinarse, bañarse, you may want to watch my video about reflexive pronouns. Very well. So because it's used with so many people, with usted, with él, with ella, and with these plural ones, it's very common, right? If you say, se bañan, ellos, ustedes, ella, él, etc. So since then, it's already, it already applies to a lot of people. Now, these are reflexive, but for example, these two, quejarse, which is to complain, some people complain a lot. Oh, why don't you make more videos about this topic? Oh, why don't you speak more Spanish? Oh, why don't you speak more English? Oh, so many complaints. Quejarse. Quejarse has more to do with you. Yo me quejo. Tú te quejas. Él se queja. Ella se queja. Ustedes se quejan, right? It's a bit different than bañarse or lavarse because you do that through one part of you. But this is kind of deeper. It's like it involves all of you. Arrepentirse, to repent. It's kind of like to change your mind too, uh, to repent. Uh, yo me arrepiento, tú te arrepientes. Él se arrepiente. Nosotros nos arrepentimos. Ellos se arrepienten. Ustedes se arrepienten. Very well. So it's kind of the same, this reflexive way of expressing something that, Kind of like, as I said, like the doctor is at the same time the patient, right? Kind of reflects onto you. That's when we use, that's one of the uses for se. And because, you know, it's so common, those verbs, and it's so common to talk about the actions do you to yourself or to part of you, that it makes sense that we find it everywhere. But let's go a bit with more examples and more contexts. Another way in which we use se is when a verb is reciprocal. When there is reciprocity amongst uh, two people. So for example, Leo y Maria, Leo and Maria understand each other, each other. There is reciprocity. I'm not saying Leo hates Maria, and for instance, Maria really hates Leo. No. Uh, Leo y Maria se entienden. Leo and Maria understand each other. They have reciprocity. There is reciprocity there. Here, Leo and Maria, Leo y Maria se aman. They love each other. Leo y Maria se pelean. They fight with each other. <laughs> it's reciprocal. It's like one gives a, one fist fight and the other gets the other one. And then they, it's, they do it to one another. So you can think about all, a lot of verbs that you can, where two people, you know, agree. Like they, they kind of uh, pelean, eh, se entienden. Mm. For example, you can say, se, se pelean, se besan, they kiss each other, se abrazan. You see, you can say, for example, you might want to use, uh, to check my, my video about the gerund and uh, to make things, to express things that are happening at the moment you're talking, to express things that are progressing, developing. You can say, ya viste, have you seen it? Leo and Maria are fighting with each other. So you can say, Leo y Maria se están peleando. Ya viste, se están peleando. O, ya viste, Leo y Maria se están besando. Uy, qué vergüenza. Se están besando. You can say, se están. Es, ay, I don't like to be on, on this side. De este lado. Se están besando. Kissing. ¿Ves? ¡Yuhu! Uh, se están besando, ya los vi. Muy bien, se están besando. So, we have two already. One with the reflexive, pron reflexive pronouns and the other with, the, with reciprocity. So, it's like reflexive pronouns. Me, te, se, nos, os. Me, te, se, nos, os. Muy bien. 
Métese, nos, os. Reflexive pronouns. Yes, sí, muy bien. Uh, second is reciprocity. When they both, two subjects, two people, do the same thing. Their love is reciprocal. Reciprocal? Is that correct to say reciprocal? Their love is reciprocal. Their hate is reciprocal. Their problems are reciprocal. Whatever is like reciprocal. <laughs> Muy bien. Now let's go to the next one. And the next one has different levels. And the reason I divide it in different levels because you'll see the difference. I cannot tell you, oh, it's an impersonal sentence because there are so many types of impersonal sentences, right? And we use that in so many different ways. So the next one is for impersonal sentences. Impersonal. Impersonal. Same meaning in Spanish. Impersonal. Is, there's no person, right? There's no person there. Who is talking? Oh, that is with the C, the manipulative. Conflicted C puts its nose and really master this field. It's the doctor of impersonal. The C is the most impersonal thing in Spanish. Really, it can take the role of everyone. Yes, we use it a lot when you want to make a sentence impersonal with no person. In one way is when things kind of happen by themselves. Uh, or when we're saying one or day, but we don't imply like one is like everybody, right? So we're going to get to the first level. For example, one lives well in Mérida, Mérida, Yucatán. I heard that yesterday. Someone says, se vive bien en Mérida. Se vive bien. It's like saying one lives well in Mérida. And then I heard two saying, se come bien aquí. One it's well here in this restaurant. This is not a restaurant, in that restaurant, but I'm giving you the example. This is indirect speech. <laughs> Se come bien en este restaurante. Se come bien aquí. Se come bien. Siempre me falta la bolita de la I. <laughs> Mal hábito. Se vive bien en Mérida. Se come bien aquí. We're not saying Roberto vive bien en Mérida or yo vivo bien en Mérida. We're saying one lives well or they live well in Merida. We're not implying one person in a specific, ¿correcto? Sí, es verdad. Se come bien, se vive bien, se camina bien aquí, está muy plano, muy bonito, etc. But we are going to a deeper level of impersonal. And that is when really there's no people. It's like uh, Non-human things can't think for themselves, something like that. For example, se renta departamento is like apartment uh, for rent, apartment for rent. We're not saying I rent my apartment, rento mi departamento. We say se renta departamento as if really the, part, the, the, the apartment is, is for rent on its own. It's like the apartment can think and it's like, the apartment puts itself for rent. Se renta departamento. It's a way to just make it impersonal, to make it general. Se renta departamento. Now, in Spain, they say se alquila piso. So this is in Latin America. Uh, I mean, in Mexico and Central America. I haven't gone to South America. But one day I will go and I'll tell you how it is said there. Se alquila piso, they say in España. En España dicen, se alquila piso. Se alquila piso, pero en México decimos, se renta departamento. Se renta casa, se renta bicicleta, se rentan autos, etc. Se, and then the verb in present, se renta. And then the thing, the object, se renta departamento. What are we trying to do here? to move away the person. We do not care who is renting it. Our focus is not who is renting it. The focus is the, the, the apartment is for rent. That's the important thing. So really the say is just a manipulative particle to express things in different ways. So se alquila piso. And then, for example, in Mexico, you go around in Mexico, you're going to see a lot of this. 
is like, se ponchan llantas gratis, which is, we, well, no, we, I, I mean, it's, we puncture tires for free, which is, if you leave your car here, if you, your par if you park your car here, we're going to puncture your tires. But they make it impersonal. Of course, nobody wants to know who is doing that horrible, mean action. Some Mexican there that just doesn't want any car to be outside his uh, house. No, it's not, not respectful. So they put this big ad. They even spend money. Honestly, they even go and spend money on buying this uh, ad saying, se ponchan llantas gratis. Now it makes sense there, right? I don't, he doesn't want to say, yo poncho llantas gratis because it's like, se ponchan llantas gratis. It's like, uh, not, nobody does it. Uh, it just happens here. See, it's like to, to remove the person. So our se comes to our help and help us remove our names from it. So you're going to rent your apartment or your house, you can say, se renta departamento. So you don't have to be really uh, the one who rents it, right? Um, or who cares? They, they want your apartment, not really you. Uh, now we're going to go to another level of impersonal. So many levels of impersonal. We're becoming too personal or very impersonal. Here we're becoming very impersonal. To eliminate who is responsible for an action. And I love this one. Oh, and we Mexicans are masters at this. It's like, it's never I, it's always se. It's never yo, it's always se, siempre, se. For example, I don't say, I lost my keys. I say, Keys are lost. <laughs> Keys are lost. It's like, uh, se me perdieron las llaves. I don't say perdí las llaves. As an active subject of that action, as the actual person who performed that action, perdí las llaves. No, señor. We say, Se me perdieron las llaves. It's like those keys might have done something because they just got lost. They got lost. They, the keys are lost. It's like, I perdí las llaves. No, se me perdieron las llaves. So if you want to avoid responsibility for your actions, you are going to be best friends with this particle, se, because it's the best thing. Now imagine you say, I forgot to do the homework. No, I, no, no. The homework was forgotten to be done. Se me olvidó hacer la tarea. Se me olvidó hacer la tarea. Se me perdieron las llaves. I lost the keys. No, se me perdieron las llaves. The keys got lost. Um, another I forgot my wallet. I? The wallet was forgotten. <laughs> the wallet, the wallet was forgotten. Say, now you can say, he forgot the keys. Se le perdió, oh, perdieron. There's, there's a problem here. I put, I, I think I was going to put a plural example and then I changed my mind. Se le, you can say se le perdió la llave. But that's only one key, right? If you want to say, se le perdieron las llaves, you can say, se le perdieron. Look how impersonal this is, that the verb is going to be conjuga conjugated with the object. What did he lose? The key. Now, imagine it was the key. Per se, le per se le perdió la llave. What did he lose? The key. No. If it's, now, if it's plural, say, se le perdieron. You will say, se le perdieron. Sorry. Se le perdieron, space, space, las llaves. See? This verb is going to be conjugated with this object. Not with me, 
that I that or with him that he forgot the keys, he lost the keys, is with the object, with the key. So it's the perfect way to avoid responsibility. You don't really do it, it just happens. Se te quemó el arroz. Se te quemó el arroz. It's also like the rice got burned. Se te quemó el arroz. That means uh, maybe this is a bit more uh, because you are pointing someone, but you're not really pointing someone in a way that, like Luis or whatever, you're saying, se le perdieron las llaves. Oh, Juan perdió las llaves. No, se le perdieron. Do you understand? It's like, Juan perdió las llaves. No, 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 no. Se le perdieron las llaves. It's like the, the keys just got lost. Oh, se te quemó el arroz. No, quemé el arroz. It's an active, an active way of doing it. I burned the rice. No, no, se quemó el arroz. But the rice got um, burned. Anyway, so you see how here we go through a different level of impersonal until we actually make it. It's really I, it's really he, it's really she, but not really. It's always se to make it not our responsibility. Very well. Now let's go with an example that might be a bit more complicated because it implies that you know uh, more, more about direct objects and indirect objects, which is a topic that a lot of you don't like, but it's so important. I wrote this example and it says, Juan regaló un libro a María. Juan gave, as a gift, regaló is like give as a gift, but together. Regaló un libro a María. Juan gave a book to María. Now, that's the long way to say it, right? And why am I teaching this if there's no word say? Because I'm going to show you how and why you see se all the time. Because we actually can change the sentence in a very short way. Especially if we already know about Juan, if we already know about the book, and we already know about Maria. So imagine we know all this context. So we're part of the conversation. Often, well, I'm going to explain this often thing in a bit. But you're going to ask the verb. What is the verb? The action. What did Juan give? What? Un libro. A book. To who? To who? A quien? A Maria. A Maria. Si? A Maria. So, what did he, what did Juan give a book. To who did Juan give the book? To Maria. Ah, how can we replace this? Well, very easy. This is the direct object because you were asking the um, verb, what? What did he give? You're going to ask the verb, what? It's the object, the direct object. We're going to change libro, it's a masculine. El libro, that's what we say, un libro. We don't say un libro, say un libro. Es el libro. So it's el. We're going to change it for lo. Lo. And then the indirect object to who, it's le. But we're going to see that, lo and le, okay? You're going to say, Juan se lo regaló. Oh, I love this part. See why? Lo, it's replacing the book because it is a ob direct object pronoun. It's replacing the book. Why did he give? A book to who? To Maria. To who is the indirect object? And because it's Maria, it's a third person. It's ella, she. We're going to replace it with le. You have to learn the indirect and direct objects. But you can go to my other lessons, direct and direct objects. Metele or metelo, etc. 
Now, why am I, why do I have here lo and se, but not le? Oh, because when you have an indirect object, so this should be le, right? I'm going to write here because I don't, I think if I pass here, you won't see. So, why didn't we put se, le, the indirect object, before lo? Juan le lo regaló. Well, besides, it sounds very silly. <laughs> Lelo. Lelo is like dumb. Lelo. Together. Be whenever an indirect object is before the direct object pronoun, instead of being le, it changes for se. That's kind of a recipe thing. Se lo regaló. No le lo regaló. Even though Really, this is le. In fact, it's so much le that Hispanics, Latin American people, we actually say Juan, and that's what I put here narrow, le regaló un libro a María. We actually make kind of a double indirect object all the time. Le regaló. This is the same as María. But we want to emphasize. We like to emphasize. So you're going to see a lot that we use le and then the indirect one. Le regaló un libro a Juan. Le regaló unos libros a mis primos. Le regaló unos... Even though you say regaló a, and you already know the recipient, we are always going to put this le before the verb, before the action. Now, when... You know the context. The context is understood. And you need both. You need the help of all pronouns you need. Like you really need them to be like helping you like ambulances and you're going to replace them. Then the le will change for se before a direct object, before lo, los, las. For example, if we say las flores, Le regaló unas flores. Flores, it's a feminine. It's a plural. What is the object that replaces a plural? A feminine. Las. So you're going to say se las regaló. Se las because las replaces flores. And se because the recipient is a le. Le regaló a, mi, a mis primos o a mi prima. Se las regalo. Okay, well, I hope this is clear. This is actually kind of the most complicated one because it involves... Sorry, I <laughs> spit a bit because my mouth is a bit dry. I should drink water. Um, Juan se lo regalo because it replaces a lot of particles in the sentence. It's kind of rearranging a sentence and that's where you see it a lot. So here, for example, yeah, it's like when you don't take responsibility, then you put se before the verb. And here is, okay, uh, when the verb is uh, reflexive, then you put se for the, uh, for, for the él, ella, ustedes, etc. But here, it's kind of a game of replacing. You can write the long sentence, but if you already know the context, you can replace each particle to make it shorter. No need to be so long. So let's make it shorter. So that's when you start replacing indirect, direct, la, la, la. Well, I hope this, uh, this is clear. Now, I got to show you two more uh, examples. So I'm going to erase one part. I hope you already copied this because I'm going to erase this part. There are some verbs in Spanish that imply a change of um, physical change or... Uh, how do you say, anemic change. Something changes. It, there are some verbs in Spanish and in English, of course, in all languages, I guess, of verbs that um, imply physical or anemic change. Physical. Uh, so, we're so with those verbs, we're going to use se. For example, let's think about to move, right? To move, if you move, you have to move from one way to the other. It implies a physical change, right? So you say, um, Juan, oh, no, let's stop about Juan. 
Rodolfo, Rodolfo is too long. Okay, Leo, let's think about Leo. Leo se mueve. Now, this is in present, right? Se mueve. Leo moves. Yeah? Se mueve. You can say Leo se movió. So you put it, se movió, con acento en la O. You put it before the, perdón. Muy bien. You put it before the verb that implies the physical change. You can say, he, uh, Leo fell, se cayó. Uh, to sleep, it implies a change. You go from be awake, awake to be asleep, it's a change. Se durmió. So you're going to use se before a verb that implies a change, physical or anemic. Now, you're also going to use se. See, this is cayó, before I keep going, cayó and cayó. That's to shut up and that's to fall. Very well. It's different. Both imply a change, right? Now, you gotta be careful with this one because it will imply that every verb implies change. But this is really like the, the, the reason I'm giving you that it implies a physical change is because it really does. When you see a verb that implies physical change and you're talking about someone, you may want, you, you are going to use the se to make that change happen. When it goes from one to the other state, then you're going to use the se. Now there is another that is actually not very common um, in Spanish, but it's common in English, but I'll show you. It's called the passive sentence, right? So for example, we're gonna say, the house was sold. We're not saying um, the house was sold. The house was sold for a million. Was sold. This is a passive. And in English, you guys love it. You love the passive voice. You love the passive voice. You see it on the newspaper all the time. In Spanish, we are not so keen on the passive voice. In fact, I had this coworker, oh, Yolanda. Oh, every time I would translate a sentence with like a passive voice, because okay, we don't use it very often, but we you do say we do use it sometimes. But she was just against the passive voice. She is against the passive voice. She cannot see the passive voice in Spanish, not even in her dreams, I think. She hates the passive voice. So she was always correcting my passive voice, even though I didn't use it a lot. But sometimes I like to use it because I like to use the variety in the language. I know it's not so common, but we use it. So when you are going to convey a passive um, sentence in Spanish, you're going to make it, you're going to make it with se. La casa se vendió, because it was past, right? It's already sold. Se vendió por un millón, por ta 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 por un millón. La casa se vendió por un millón. Um, the passive way would be la casa was, fue, sold, participle, vendida. Remember the participio, so the verbs that end with ado or ido, ado or ido, ado o ido, se vendió. Muy bien. So the house was sold por un millón. We are going to usually use la casa se vendió por un millón. Rarely we're going to see la casa fue vendida. Sorry, se vendió. Vendida. La casa fue vendida por un millón. We don't really make that passive voice like that. When you are using a passive sentence in English, don't make it passive in Spanish. That means don't use the past and then the participle. Use the se and then the simple past. Se 
vendió, se entregó. La casa fue entregada a los compradores. Was given to the purchasers, the people who purchased it. In Spanish, you wouldn't say, la casa se entregó a los compradores. And um, I'm going to open in a page and I'm going to show you that there are a few uses of se. And especially in this one, because politicians always avoid responsibility. So the se always come, comes to help them. Oh, look at this. Se siguió un proceso democrático. I'm going to speak like a politician. Se siguió un proceso democrático en las elecciones. Like a democratic uh, process uh, was followed, right? It's like we don't say seguimos. They say se siguió. It's like the process was followed by itself. Se siguió un proceso democrático. They love the se. Oh, yeah. Uh, se, se dijo en las últimas elecciones. It was said in last elections. It's like, we don't know who said it. We don't really care. Names, you, that's not the important thing. You guys always focus on the wrong thing. What do you want a name? How does it help you to know a name? Just important to know that the end the elections, the process was followed. That's the important thing. So it's like the say always, like going around helping politicians to avoid responsibility. Anyway, there are tons of uses. Open any page of everything and you'll see tons of uses. I hope you enjoyed this lesson or at least you got to understand you, you got to understand a little bit of the uses of the say as a reflexive pronoun, as a particle to express reciprocity amongst two people that love each other to replace direct and indirect objects and say that before an indirect, you're gonna put say and all that story to avoid responsibility, to not make it passive. Why even Spanish is not so passive, etc. cetera. Uh, thank you for watching my lesson. Gracias por ver mi video. Uh, if you would like to watch more videos, please watch more videos. If you would like me to keep making more videos, you can donate to my channel. You can go to my website, butterf butter butterflyspanish.com and donate to, my, to me so I can keep making more videos and I can keep preparing more videos and I can keep teaching you Spanish. It's nice to see you. Take care. Muchas gracias por ver mi video y nos vemos pronto. Bye. Adios.